Bread to Win, brought to you by Arrowfield, the home of four-time champion sire, Snitzel. Hello, I'm Caroline Searcy. Welcome to the final episode of Bread to Win for this series. Coming up on this week's show, our Osforce News with more Spring Carnival Group 1 racing. We look at the huge influence on Australasian racing of champion New Zealand Sire Sabobiel. And our final Arrowfield Start Industry Influences segment for this season. First though, plenty to wrap up in our Osforce News. Sets and they're racing. Caulfield Guineas Day in Melbourne and Hill Stakes Day in Sydney were highlighted by wins to two colts bred by Arrowfield Stud and Partners and racing for Coolmore Stud and Partners. We'll cover Rose Hill shortly, but Caulfield's feature mile for three year olds was won by the son of written tycoon Private Life, conceived when the former champion Australian sire spent a season at Arrowfield in 2020. Private Life is from the Epona Stakes winning Snitzel mare Aliana Tild, who was placed in Group 1 such as the ATC Oaks and the Sydney Cup. He was a $650,000 Magic Millions yearling sold by Arrowfield as agent to Tom Magnia, while his sire, Written Tycoon, currently heads the Australian General Sires list at the age of 22, standing this year at Yulong Stud for a private fee. Deny knowledge, 200 metres to go. It was a dual Group 1 celebration for Yulong as their Irish-bred daughter of Pride of Dubai, Deny Knowledge, was successful in the Might and Power Stakes with a potential backup into next week's Caulfield Cup. Her dam, the Paris Shrug, is a Manduro half-sister to Royal Ascot Gold Cup winner Big Orange. She was bought by Yulong for $500,000 from the Newgate Farm Draft at this year's Magic Millions broodmare sale. Conceived in the middle of Pride of Dubai's three Northern Hemisphere stints with the son of Street Cry standing at Coolmore Australia this season at a fee of $22,000. But it's all Antino. The third Group 1 on the Caulfield program, the Turak Handicap, was part of a great day for New Zealand breads as Antino was successful at elite level after placings in the Maccabi Diva and Fian Stakes his past two runs. He was a $27,000 NZB ready to run by for New Balance Racing from China. Cheltenham Stables. His sire Redwood, another successful sire son of High Chaparral, stands this season at Jerry Harvey's Westbury Stud in New Zealand at a fee of $10,000 New Zealand dollars plus GST. The Scalacci Stakes was one of two Group 2s on the program with star witness filly Bellatrix Star giving the Tiakau Racing Team a big thrill now heading for the Coolmore Stud Stakes at Flemington. While the Australian Bloodstock Ownership Group celebrated the win of Frank Frankel's Herman Hess in the Herbert Power Stakes over 2,400 metres. Here's Switzerland bursting up the inside. At Rose Hill Gardens, we find the English Graduate of the Week in Roman Consul Stakes winner Switzerland. Bred by Arrowfield Stard and Chloros Bloodstock, the son of Snitzel was sold at last year's English Easter Yearling Sale for $1.5 million to Tom Magnia and raced by Coolmore and Partners. He featured in the Arrowfield Stud Draft in our English Easter Yearling Sale preview his damn Ms. Bad Behaviour by US champion Blame was a $600,000 Fazig Tipton broodmare purchase in 2019. Snitzel stands this season at Arrowfield Stud as a four-time champion Australian sire at a fee of $247,500 at the end of Saturday's racing, sitting in fourth place on the current general sire's table. The Arrowfield team was also celebrating the gloaming stakes win of El Castello, a first crop son of their young son of Dundee, Castelvecchio. He heads to the Group 1 Spring Champion Stakes, while Castelvecchio, a Champagne Stakes and Rose Hill Guineas winner, stands this season at Arrowfield at a fee of $22,000.
It's attrition in front of Kovalika. The Group 2 feature, the 1900 metre Hill Stakes, was won by Attrition, a son of the regally bred four-time Group 1 winner Churchill and a $180,000 English Premier graduate sold by Mill Park Stud to Mitch Friedman. He was bred by South Australian breeder Harry Perks and comes from the Loving Cup estate label Danline. The wonderful mare's Group 3, the Nivison, was won by star thoroughbred zoo star Mayor Alentia, a half-sister to stakes winners Malkovich and Vonderbar. The $1.5 million Alan Brown was a success for another Kiwi sire in Rich Hill Studs Shocking, with here to shock successful for the Hayes team and heading for the big dance. And I Am Invincible's close relation to Fastnet Rock and Node took out the half-million dollar Tap Craig. In other news, book one of the Tattersall's October yearling sale was topped by a Frankel filly from the dual group winning Shamadal mare Al Jazzy for 4.4 million guineas, sold by Newsall's Park Stud to Ammo Racing. Second top prize was a 4.3 million guinea son of Wooten Bassett from the Galileo mare Park Bloom, the highest priced yearling colt in the world this year. He was sold by Lodge Park Stud to Amo Racing, holding off underbidder Coolmore's MV Magnia. The English Ready to Race sale is being held on Tuesday, October 15, featuring two-year-olds by a range of proven and exciting new stallions. The fastest breeze up in the early sessions was a son of Yulong Stud's Blue Diamond winner Tagaloa from winning Magic Albert Mare La Magique. The colt is offered by KBL Thoroughbreds and recorded a time of 10.19 seconds at the Hawkesbury Breeze Ups. And a stallion we featured last spring, the Epsom handicap winning Ellsberg has some outstanding first foals on the ground. The son of Snitzel's Spill the Beans is a great value option for mare owners at Murella's Stud in New South Wales, standing this season at a fee of just $9,900. Time for a break on Bread to Win. Coming up, the Cambridge Stud performance of the week and continuing the great Sir Tristram Zabil, New Zealand sire line, Waikato Stud's champion stallion, Savabil. Nazi Tavi went to the lead. Championess has been asked again. The Cambridge Stud Performance of the Week once again highlighted the great loss to the New Zealand industry of the wonderful son of Montjuic Tavistock. He sired his 12th individual Group 1 winner when Snazzy Tavi took out the Tarapa feature, the Livermore Classic, on Saturday. Bred by Cambridge Stud and Curramore's Golden Cunningham, the mayor is again representative of the hugely successful Tavistock Zabil Cross, being from New Zealand's St. Ledger winner Ritzy Lady. Tavistock died in 2019 and has left a huge legacy including sire sons and broodmare daughters and just last week the Epsom Handicap winner Chaya Wolf. Sir Tristram and Zabil are names well known in Australia for their formidable record of siring Melbourne Cup, Derby, Oaks and plenty of other Group 1 winners. But now Zabil's son Savabil, a Cox Plate winner himself, is carrying that mantle forward and we visited him recently at Waikato Stud. Sangster in front with 75 to go. Hugh Bowman makes it back to back Victoria Derby's. Scarlet Lady race to the lead. The Oaks is her. Orchestral race to the lead and takes out the Vinery Stud Stakes. Mark Savabeel, he's been a wonderful horse to the entire Chittick family, obviously, and all your staff. Everyone is so fond of, of you know, what he is as an animal, but he's left an incredible legacy here at Waikato, hasn't he? Absolute legacy. Le legacy for, for New Zealand, you know, like he's he's uh, nearly heading in towards, well, he's not far off um, single figures to, um, and, and getting towards, uh, heading towards um, his father's record of, of, of stakes winners, which, which is just incredible. Like, whether he makes it or not, uh, um, you know, like he's tracking towards that he should. Um, and for him to become, if he becomes the highest stakes um, producing stallion to ever stand in New Zealand, that, that, that I think it'll be a deserved award, you know, um, because 
we've used all the accolades on the way through his his incredible career at stud he's 23 years old now so he's been at stud 19 years you know he's been champion of this champion of that and obviously group one winners fillies colts sprinters stayers everything he's he's just quite incredible so um it would be lovely to uh, to reach that achievement of um the high stakes um producing stallion ever to stand in New Zealand. And, and it is a New Zealand thing, isn't it? I mean, you think, you know, Sir Tristram Zabiel into Savabiel, and he was a Cox Plate winner. I remember when he won that Cox Plate as a three-year-old, it was a bit of a surprise. Everyone was a little bit almost stunned. But, but do you remember that Cox Plate? Would you have dreamt this horse could be what he has been here in the years subsequent? No, I, I certainly I remember it once again, <laughs> once again that, that turn of foot. I'd only seen him. We'd been in the stable just a couple of months beforehand and seen him, but um, it was certainly um, probably what I don't forget is that it was certainly no surprise for, for, for Roger, and he let everybody know that on That's the TV right. afterwards. <laughs> he did. <laughs> again, that turn of foot came around the turn, back off them, massive turn of foot to, to win that Cox Plate. And two things that are a little bit different between him and his father and Zabiel, and not taking anything away from uh, Zabiel, but with Savabiel being out of a success express mirror, I think, you know, like I'm sure that's where we get that bit of speed with a few of them, that, that, that earlier stuff and that bit of speed with them. Uh, secondly, um, and probably even more more pertinent, is um, Zabiel was, was a legend, predominantly in that uh, in that middle distance racing, and of course back in, back in his time, you didn't have the um, influx of import, import horses that were racing in those distances through the peak of his career, you know, so Savabiel's competed in those middle distance against all that influx of, uh, of the European horses and um, you know still managed to you know top our premierships and end up in the top 10 in Australia etc etc. Lucia Valentina, what a slashing win in the Queen Elizabeth. And I guess, you know, you're so, um, you know, mired in, in the day-to-day -day here at a, at a working stud farm. It's hard probably to step back and have a look and, and understand how much people love the horse. When you look at the, the stars that he's, he's sired in Australia and New Zealand, Lucia Valentina, you know, Turnbull Vinery, Queen Elizabeth in Sydney, Moonga, Probabil, I Wish I Win. These are all really popular racehorses. Do you feel that, is that something that, that means a lot to you? Do you get time to step back and go, wow, look, everybody actually loves the produce of Savabil? Yeah, it's a very good question, that. And I suppose you remember back to Zabiel in those days, might and power, et cetera, et cetera, and you just think, what, what an incredible stallion. We'll never see one like that again in New Zealand. But when you name those sorts of horses that that Savabil's left, and, and, and with him closing in on his um, amount of stakes winners, he's, he's certainly up there. And, and I think one of the things that we're, we're most proud of is, is he's 23 years old now. He's heading off to that breeding barn two, three, hasn't been required to go four times this year, but, but he just charges down there with, with energy, like as I say, when he was a four-year-old in, in the starting. So he's, he's just a happy, healthy horse. and. Um, you know, while he's happy and healthy and still producing um, and doing what he does, then we're ha we're health we're happy as well. <laughs> Do you have any favourites out of out of the horses he's produced? Are there some that you really? I mean, I wish I win. Obviously, is a is very close to everyone's heart now. But any any real favourites? Oh, look, there, there's. I mean, the beauty about him and what he leaves is is you get a lot of lot of favourite horses, I suppose. But and you know, in the foaling paddock now, it's just really nice to get fillies out of out of nice mares by him because um, that's not going to we're not we're not going to be able to get those forever. But um, yeah, I suppose uh, yeah, for me personally, with the whole background story, etc. On um, on I wish I win and, and uh, what he's done for us or what they've both done for us, Savabiel and, and uh, him. I suppose he's got to be at the top of the list for me anyway. He throws. You know, obviously the sprinters stay as middle distance horses, but when you look at them as yearlings, can you tell what might be a good when you see the foal or the yearling? Because a lot of them, you know, they're fairly similar. They, you know, he throws sort of a, a lot of similar types. Can you pick the ones that are, get, that are going to be the good ones? Well, you can have a go, but I suppose when they're by seven, there's more chance than a lot of them. But no, he does. He does leave it nice, tidy type, you know. And and once again. Not take anything away from from Zibiel, but he could leave some the odd pretty big plain one, and Sav just hasn't done that. And probably once again going back to that uh, 
success express sort of uh, side of things which is dam side which has tidied things up. The real top judges they probably say that they're not the best walkers at the yearling sales um, but hey when they get on the track they're, they're, they're some of the best runners so that's the main thing. Yeah it's fantastic seeing your staff too we saw the team walking down with Savabile they're so proud of him as well aren't they? Yeah I mean we, we obviously we love him to bits and, and you know we've taken him through his his whole life you can really tell what he's thinking you, you can he doesn't really need to talk you know what he's saying and as a sire of sires too now of course embellish is doing a great job off you know limited opportunities as a, a lesser price stallion uh, mawonga calls a bill there's there's another legacy continuing on and there aren't that many sire sons are they no that and that to be to be honest you know probably apart from dane hill that 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 probably goes across the board really you know like we all talk about Sire Sons, but um, it's a pretty hard gig, that sort of thing, following Sire Sons. Um, when Gary um, first stood Centaine, people said, what do you want a son of Century for? When we stood O'Reilly, they told us, what do you want a son of Last Tycoon for? You know, and, and, and even, even Zabil, you know, like um, really, well, obviously, he, Savabil's uh, his most successful Sire Son, and beyond that's probably Reset, who was sort of all right, you know, he was, he was no Savabil. So certainly to get young horses like we've talked about at stud, and uh, I know I'm, I'm probably biased. Um, we always wanted to stand a son of um, Savabil ourselves, and, and of course, because we bred a few of them, like Embellish and like Moanga, obviously it limited our broodmare band a fair bit, uh, whereas Novia, he's, he's, he's out of a mare that, that Gary actually bought, and it's a, it's a different line, so that's why he really sort of suits us, and she was a group winner as a two-year-old, so. I don't think we'll have to wait too too long for them. No, he's just an he's an absolute legacy, and uh, we'll try our best, but it'll probably never be repeated. No there, he ran right over the top of them. Well, no there, he is here, as you mentioned. Uh, Ten thousand dollars he's standing for. This is fantastic for a two thousand guineas winner, an eight hundred thousand dollar yearling bought by David Ellis and raced for Tiarco. It is good to see he is continuing that legacy, and and who knows what he could do. Oh, absolutely! Like he was a winner as a two-year-old himself. Once again, he was um, second to last, buried on the on the on the rail on the um, in the two thousand guineas. I hope he got him to the outside. He said once he settled and let him go, like like to be honest, mathematically you'd think that there's no way that he'd catch he'd catch them sort of thing. But but I hope he said once he um, got him settled and in a straight line and let him go, he said he just knew he had it won. So. That was an incredible turn of foot. Injured himself after that, so didn't get the opportunity to race in, in, a, in Australia. Um, so that's when we acquired him. And um, he got a 120 mares in his first season. Last season, he served 130 on the foals that he'd left. This season, third season, you know, we're going to be certainly serving in excess of 140 mares. So it's sort of a little bit against the flow with, with what we usually all live with is in getting stallions going. His numbers have increased each year and he hasn't had a runner. We filmed him as a yearling here, he was one of our yearling drafts um, and, and some of the notes that I made, one of the picks of the draft, very like Savabil, all quality will be one of your stars I suspect and he turned out to be exactly that as a group one winner so he's another elite horse that you know a good judge like David Ellis who's bought some wonderful horses here obviously you know really admired from the outset. Mm, absolutely beautiful foal and as, and, and as I say it's uh, Full brother made 950 at the Magic Million sale. Um, the mares had two recent fillies, which um, Gary's kept, and uh, they're, they're just both beautiful types that foal this year. We're, we're still less than 100 foals, but she's the best foal on the farm so far, and probably will be by the end of the year. Well, so much to look forward to, and it's so great seeing so much of your family involved in the industry too. That's a great legacy that you yourself have left as well, yourself through, you know, Gary all the way through your kids. They're, you know, there's so much more to come for generations here at Waikato Stud. Absolutely. Well, there is a sire of sires. Um, <laughs> Charlotte, the oldest, yeah, she's uh, she's over there and she's involved with um, Sh um, Shadwell and, at, at Newmarket and helping out Angus Gold, which is fantastic her getting that experience. George has been here, there and everywhere. Um, Irish National Stud, Whitten, and now back here at the farm. And, and um, Harry, he's um, he's starting this uh, various apprenticeship. and. Um, Charlie, the, the seven-year-old, he's just telling us all what to do. <laughs> As it should be. 100%. <laughs>
for the final industry influences of the season having been asked many times why I fell in love with the racing and breeding industry I thought I'd explain to our bread to win viewers and it wasn't an individual who made me become interested in the racing industry it was the horses I fell in love with and the racing media People who grew up with racing sometimes don't understand just how many young people are influenced to follow the industry without a family member sparking their interest to bet on it, to invest in horses, to wind up with careers in the industry. And very often it comes from their exposure to racing through the media. It's why I fought so hard to continue providing breeding content on TV and also now online through Bread to Win and the rehoming program Thoroughbreds Are Go. To explain the industry better to newcomers and make more people passionate about racing and breeding thoroughbreds and caring for them away from the track. From TV news footage of Rancher, Manicato and Kingston Town doing track work that I have to this day on old beta tapes to racetrack and turf monthly magazines and the magnificent photos they contained that adorned my bedroom walls which have now translated in the modern day to online video snippets of people's favourite horses that are shared by trainers and stud farms and make people understand the background to the industry. While racing can be a fairly insular bubble and more and more so these days, it should always be trying to push the content out to a wider audience to make them fall in love with racing and breeding as well. I know from people who watch my shows, so many of them are new to the industry and they hang off every word they hear about it as they love learning more about the stallions who sired their first horse, the racing history of the dam and their relatives going even further back. The marketing of racing in this day and age must remember that young people not only enjoy a party but they actually enjoy getting to the track and seeing the horses the same way so many of my generation and previous generations continue to do so let's encourage them to understand racing itself to see the horses and bet on them buy into them and maybe make a life themselves in the industry so as I say while I don't have an individual human who inspired me to be involved with the racing industry I always hope the industry will realize what a huge influencer it can be itself on attracting new people to love what we all love so much ourselves. That is Bread to Win for this season. Thanks for watching and to our fantastic sponsors and everyone that assists on the show behind the scenes. I'll be back next week with the first episode of Series 2 of Thoroughbreds A Go coming to you from here at the second annual Equimillion. I'm Caroline Searcy. I look forward to seeing you then. Bread to Win, brought to you by Arrowfield, the home of four-time champion sire, Snitzel.